Hey guys, welcome to Firehouse Kitchen. We're back down here at headquarters, and I've got two guys with me. They're going to help cook today. We got Sergeant Chris Durbin here to my right, and then we got Firefighter Kettler Calixte. He made an appearance on our first episode, but he's going to be our help, helping out today, being assistant for us. And we're going to cook something that's probably an old firefighter tradition, especially around the Philadelphia area, because it is. Philly cheesesteak. Philly cheesesteak sandwiches and we're going to start doing that today. Chris is going to cook like I said. So Chris, what do you got going? What do you put in it? How do you do it? Walk me through it. First we got our green onions and our onions and our green peppers. Uh, we also have a little bit of mushrooms to put in it. Um, I actually went with some sirloin steaks. It just happened to be what was on sale. Usually I'll try to get something that's real thin sliced. It kind of cuts down a little bit on your prep time. A uh, little bit of Worcestershire soy sauce and some garlic to go with it. So the first thing that I did, and I already kind of got a little bit ahead of myself uh, just to cut down on time, is I took the majority of my steak, sliced it up real thin, kind of minced it up, and then put some soy sauce and Worcestershire with it. Uh, we got the flat top going behind us, so we're gonna cook it on. One of the key things to do is go through your meat and kind of trim out some of the fat, make it a little bit leaner cut. This isn't the healthiest meal in the world, but we but do have help uh, getting rid of yeah. some of the fat. Um, I did get some rolls to go with it, just some hoagie style rolls. The, the way that I'll do these, and granted, I'm cooking for several guys, so we make it a little bit bigger than normal. Um, I'll cook all the fixings together, um, all the vegetables in one skillet, and the meat on the flat top, and then guys can kind of mix and match as they go, put their own cheese on it, and make it their own. A lot of it's to taste. This is just something that. Every time I make it, it's a little bit different than the last time. Personal preference, I like to go ahead and cut my meat up a little bit early and go ahead and get it and marinate. Yeah, that way a good flavor in there. Get those flavors to really soak in. Um, as far as the vegetables, I like to wait and cut those up the last thing so that they stay nice and crisp. And we do saute them in butter. You have some other healthier options if you wanted to just use olive oil or something, maybe some uh, coconut oil, something a little bit healthier. But just to kind of show you what we do here, um, thin sliced. Cutting across the grain of the meat helps it cut a little better. Man, you're like a chef. You're giving all these so, tips on how to cut the meat and stuff. It's pretty um, good. It does help. One thing that I've learned from experience, it helps if the meat's a little bit cooler, um, not frozen, but a little bit harder. Makes it a lot easier to cut um, when you're trying to get it cut really small. When Chris first got on, he was known as the crock pot cooker because he cooked every meal in a crock pot but he's evolved now to I did a little bit better stuff being able to throw a meal together in a short amount of time put it in the crock pot and leave it is definitely an advantage for what's us. the saying set it and forget it or something the yeah. crock pot commercial <laughs> set it and forget it we did uh, I did put Kettler over here cutting the onions intentionally I was hoping that maybe he could tear up for you guys give you a little bit dramatic effect but <laughs> he's a pretty tough guy so yeah he's, have he's not giving in yet he's not giving in so when we get that ready Kettler's gonna throw in the veggies into the skillet kind of get those sauteing and then at cook time is what, 10 minutes maybe? Right, the most? Uh, you're not looking at a whole lot of cook time. The main thing is just to get the vegetables sauteed. You really want your onions to start looking clear. That's how you know they're getting done. Um, you definitely don't want to overcook your vegetables. Uh, having a little bit of a crisp taste to it adds to the sandwich. I like to put some mozzarella on top of it. Once I get the meat done, just to go ahead and let that soak in. I'll throw a little bit of Parmesan and then I've got some provolone cheese for the guys when they make their own sandwiches. So when we, with the new guys, the Kettler's, you know, the newest that we have downtown, he's he's come on board and got some good cooking experience and things like that now. Speaking of new guys, we got some new guys going through training right now. Uh, eight new guys in the day, yeah, eight guys going through that, so that's going good for them. They'll be in training for about eight weeks, eight to ten weeks, something like that. Um, and some of them have prior experience in firefighting, so they're going to go through the our training academy here. So, but anybody wants to try out, though, we are we will be accepting applications coming up uh, soon. You can contact City Hall for that uh, to get an idea on that, or call down here. We'll direct you guys to the right people. But we're constantly looking for hires and like that. So, if there's something you want to do, and come on and cook with us, you can do it. That's, right. That is one of the hardest things for the new guys is figuring out how much to cook, and it was yeah, hard for definitely. me. I mean, you're, you're used to. I cook at home. We got a wife and two kids. Not near as much. Not, not near enough food for the guys. Yeah, not 800 here. guys. So, so what I already did is I got the the flat top already nice and hot. Uh, I will put a little bit of olive oil on the flat top just to help make sure nothing sticks when we get started. And then I've got my butter melted down as soon as Kettler gets done.
I know most people probably don't have a nice cooktop like this at home. Uh, when I cook these at home, one thing that I'll do is I'll just use a large skillet. Go ahead and basically cook it the same way. Uh, you just get a little bit more effect when you cook it on the flat top. Well, sure and, and you don't have, how many pounds of meat did you buy? Um, for this, when I'm cooking here, I usually do about half a pound of meat per guy. Okay, you're getting it over there? Good. So after, uh, it. after I got the meat going, get it good. It was, the skillet was really hot when I started, so it actually cooked really fast. Uh, hopefully, Keller will have everything over there ready to go in so we get the vegetables going. He's being very diligent and safe, and we like that, so that's good. Uh, if something were to happen here and we get a, a run, like I said, we'll have to go. But if we had a kitchen fire here, uh, that's something that you guys need to think about when you're cooking at home is being safe with that. Anytime you're cooking with grease, always uh, have uh, baking soda or flour around that you can throw on it. Do not put it in water, um, but then remove that from the heat as fast as we can. Also, it's really important uh, if you're cooking at home with kids, just keeping your pot handles turned away from that so they can't grab it. Uh, always just be careful when you guys are cooking. So. Now they're both working hard back there. Hopefully it won't take too much longer and they'll get things going. Oh, sorry, just keeping your mushrooms over here. So I put all, all my vegetables in there together. Again, sauteing it in butter is not the, the most health, health conscious way to go. But uh, we also, we work hard. Uh, in our job, we burn a lot of calories. And we work out, we do our best to eat healthy. But at the same time, I want, I want the guys to enjoy their meal. Uh, food is experience you want to make sure it's good but you can cook healthy and enjoy too now. yes come on so we, we're required we're required to work out at least 30 minutes a day so we do uh burn most of us work out for longer than that um, and we train usually every day so we're like he said we're definitely uh burning through calories quite a bit so eating uh, you know a big meal a hearty meal i should say is, is a good thing as well because we're definitely going to be using that once the uh i mean just about cooked uh, I'll keep it on here to keep it nice and warm while the vegetables try to catch up. Throw a little bit of garlic on there. I waited to put the garlic in until now just because I didn't want to burn it. Uh, with the skillet being so hot, you can burn garlic pretty fast and then nobody likes to smell of burnt garlic. So. <laughs> Very few people like to smell like garlic, let alone burnt, burnt garlic, huh? Right. A little bit of Parmesan on there. Once the vegetables get done, I'll go ahead and melt some mozzarella on top of them. And then, uh, like I said, I got a pack of provolone cheese for anybody that wants that. I'm feeling pretty useless. I'm just standing back this time and watching everything. We've got an assistant today, though, so that, that helps speed it up. So. Don't worry, Andy. We'll let you do all the cleanup. Oh, okay. Yeah, the cleanup. That's what I like. Hey guys, we're going to take a break while the food is cooking inside. We're going to talk about a safety tip real quick. We are coming up on the time of year when rain is going to start coming down in buckets. And with that comes localized flooding. So when you guys see something across the road that looks like water, it probably is. Uh, don't drive your car through. We get calls every year for people trying to go across water that is across the road and end up getting stuck. It really messes up your car. So anyways, turn around, don't drown, and stay safe. How's it coming, Kettler? It's getting better. <laughs> Woo, burning, man. It's hot. <laughs> Don't let it burn. It's getting a little better. Couple cheese, a little bit. I'm trying to give you guys a good angle here, but it's looking like he's, he knows what he's doing. Don't mess it up now that I said that. Oh, no, make it. There you go. Veggies mm -hmm. however you like it. Yeah, throw a few on there, get it. From the bottom there. Yeah. That looks good. That's good. Some cheese, you got provolone? Yeah. Got provolone. Throw that on there. Spicy brown Oh, a little mustard too. Put a little mustard on there. What calories this one's to do like this? Yeah, Kettler, this one's for you, man. This one's for you. No, not the mustard thing. Too late now. Throw you a little bit of cheese in there. Let that melt down. You'll be good to go. Kettler, it's all you. Good and dry, Kettler. Come on, man, that's what you're here for. 
Yeah, the assistant's gonna eat it. We're gonna have to take a bite. Oh, that's the best thing you gotta make it look good though. Alright, don't, don't, make, don't make Chris look bad. I'll try my best. <laughs> Oh yeah. What do you think? Steak's getting away, right? You gotta say something. <laughs> Kettler's really polite, you don't wanna talk about <laughs> I wanna talk about yeah, Okay, okay. I wanna talk about my mouthful, but it's delicious. Very good. Thank you, Chris, for coming out and cooking for us and Kettler being our assistant and eating all of our food. Uh, we appreciate it. Hope you guys have a great day and we'll see you guys soon. Thanks guys.